This is the final video in our series for this computer application technology or CAT PRAC exam for grade 11s from November 2020. Thank you to Study Opportunities for donating this paper to allowing us to do a video walkthrough of it so you can help you with your revision. And we're dealing with the last question which tends to be a bit of everything. It's like a nice general question. So let's get this last question done. So here we've got a thank you letter that will be sent to all the teachers involved in this undertaking. So I've opened up the document over here. So let's do question 5.1. Locate the paragraph in blue under the text dear supporter there is there's the paragraph that's in blue change the line spacing of this paragraph so that it is the same as the line spacing of the paragraph in red we want to click on this one and we want to see what the line spacing is. so if I come to the paragraph option you can see that the line spacing is multiple and it's 1.08 so I'm going to select this paragraph and change its line spacing to multiple and make it 1.08 as well and click okay so now they're both the same 5.2, locate the text chart goes here in yellow on the first page. And that's obviously over there. Replace the text with the chart in the five chart spreadsheet. The chart must be pasted in such a way that any future changes to the chart in the spreadsheet will automatically appear in the Word document. So that means we want to create a link to this chart. So yeah, I've got the Excel spreadsheet five chart and that's the chart that we want to use. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to come here to where the chart must go. And I'm going to actually paste it. I'm going to paste special. And I want to paste it as a link, which we want it as a graphic object. We don't want to display it as an icon, but we do want it as a office graphic. We could also use a chart object. And if we click OK, now my chart is in my document, which means if I change these values, like for example, 4G, you see how my charts change. I can then right click and update the link. And you can see that it's already changed to what was originally over there. Then 5.3, locate the table on the first page. Edit the table so that it's displayed as shown below. The height of the top row must be one centimeter. So they've already told me one specification. So let's go look at this table. So there we go. We want the height of the first row to be one centimeter. So I'm going to click on that first row. And we want the alignment of that text to go horizontally, not vertically. So I'm going to go right click and go to table properties and so we want to deal with this particular row and we want the height to be one centimeter but we want the direction of that text so if i come here to table design table layout you can see the text direction we can just click on options until we get to what we want there we go that's much better i think that's what we are looking for and the, the height is still one centimeter if you click here you can see that the height is still one centimeter Next, you'll notice that there's no shading in this particular table. But if you look at ours, we've got shading over there. So I'm going to select these blocks and I'm going to remove the shading, which would be a design issue. So the shading, we're going to say no shading, no color. So let's leave it so that there's no shading. I think if you made it white, I think it would be accepted as well. And then you'll notice that the labels over here, we can see clearly. But here we've got these lines going through. So I want to remove these diagonal lines. So I'm going to click on them. And we want to go to borders. I'm going to go to borders and shading. And you'll see those diagonal lines I want to get rid of. So that diagonal line I want to get rid of like that. Boom. And if I click OK, you can see that they have now been removed. And then you'll notice that the bottom row is not in this diagram. But in here we've got this bottom row. So let's remove this one. I'm going to click on it. Right click on it and delete cells. And we want to delete the entire row. So it looks like that. So there we go. It's five marks. We did the heart. We did the orientation, we did the alignment of the text, we did the shading, we removed the line, we changed the diagonal lines. I think those are five things that we've done, so therefore we should get all five marks. So let's go to 5.4, locate the word art at the top of the second page called questionnaire. There it is, over there. Remove the transform text effect so that the word art is displayed as the following. So at the moment it's got a transform text effect. If I come into shape... And you'll see over here, the not the shape effect, which is the actual block. We're looking at the text effect. And you'll see over here, there's the transform text effect. We want to remove it. So we're going to go no transform effect. And then it should take it back to normal. There we go. So I think that's correct. Then four, locate the questionnaire on the second page and change the properties of the form fields next to the text in green. So there they are next to green. What do we want to do? First of all, we want to set the default value of this field to checked so when in doubt with form controls i just right click on it also a useful tip make sure your developer tab is selected if you don't know how to get to it you can right click on the ribbon anywhere like that customize it and make sure that your developer tab is selected so i'm going to right click on this checkbox and go to properties and we want the default value to be checked so there's always got that cross in it 
then set the help text for this field if the user presses F1 to group name. So help text if they press F1 to group name. So right click on cluster, go to properties, and you can see there's the help text and there's the option if, if the F1 key is pressed. And we want to type our own text, we want to type in group name. So if you just follow the, the words in the question, you will find exactly where to go. So I click OK, click OK, and there we go. Over here, ensure that if the user enters a date in this field, the date will be displayed in the following format, Wednesday, 28th October 2020. So let's right click on the date option, the date form field control, go properties, and we want the date format to look like now we want the full day with day, day, then the full month in the year, year. I think that is the correct one. So we want the full day, which would be day, day, day. Then we want the day, day, the actual number of the day, the full name of the month, and then the year in four. And that is the correct one for that. So there we go. I think we've done those ones. We must not do the restrictive editing of the form. So we can't really test it, but that should be correct. Let's move on to 5.6 and the final question. Perform a mail merge. Okay, before we do that, I'm going to quickly save. So make sure that we don't lose anything using the current document as follows. So be, let's be careful with a mail merge. There are a couple of steps that we need to do. So let's take it step by step. Use the supporters spreadsheet at your day as your data source. So I'm going to come here. We're going to go to mailings and we're going to start a mail merge. Now this is a questionnaire probably means we're going to use it as some sort of letter. So I'm going to use letters. So we're starting the mail merge for letters and our recipients are coming from an existing list. It's coming from the supporters spreadsheet. So I need to now go find the exam folder and we're going to use the supporters spreadsheet for this one. So there's our data source for my information and we are using that particular tab, I assume. Then locate the placeholder supporter and years experience highlighted in green near the top of the document. Replace them with the merge fields. So if I scroll to the top of the document, there you can see supporter and years experience. So instead of that wording, we want to get the value from our source. So we're going to use our merge field. So let's insert a merge field. And now we've got options here. So we want to put the supporter's name there. So that's going to be the supporter's name. And the years experienced is going to be the field that's got the years experienced. So there we go. Let's put a space there to see put a gap. And you can click on preview results to see what it looks like. So it's going to look something like that. It's going to have the name with the initial and it's going to have the number of years experience. So that's what it's going to look like for the first one. Now save the document before we complete the merge. So make sure that we save it. So we're going to save it now. And then we're going to actually do the actual finished merge process by completing it and saving the final product as five merge in the exam folder. So we're going to come here to finish and merge. We're going to say edit individual documents. We want all of them. And so this is my result. As you can see, it's got 36 pages. So there's the first person and their questionnaire. And then the second person and their questionnaire. So there should be 18 in total, I think, here, because there's two per person. So there's 36 pages, so 18 people. I think that is correct. So we want to save this. So we're saving this in our exam folder. And they said they want us to save it as five merge. So we will change the name to five merge and save it. So in our exam folder, we should have the document that we just edited, but we should also have now have a five merge document, which has our mail merge final product. And there we go. I think we are done with the paper. There we go. We've done all the questions. It's 150 marks. Hope you did well. Hopefully you feel a bit better prepared for your upcoming exams and use this as a good resource for your revision. Don't forget about our YouTube channel called At Mr. Long Computer Terms to help you with some theory content. Thank you for watching this video series. For other exam papers, go to our YouTube channel, go to the playlist tab, and you'll find all the content you need over there. Leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and make sure that you share us with your friends as well to help us help them. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.